Hi guys, my name is Nicolet Mashile, also known as The Financial Bunny. Welcome to The Financial Bunny TV. Today we're talking all things TFSA. Now remember that none of my videos constitute as financial advice. If you are looking for financial advice, please do speak to somebody who is certified and registered with the FSCA. I'm quite excited to be doing this video because we are coming to the end of the financial year. And if you have not as yet, this might be a fund that you are looking to actually invest or save into. Now let's take it a couple of steps back and actually just describe the acronym TFSA. It is standing for tax-free savings account. However, in some instances, it can stand for the tax-free shares account, depending on the asset base of what your account, what your money is being invested or saved into. Now you'll get a better understanding of this a little bit later on. So let's go back again to a couple of, or a historical, just a quick historical move in terms of how the TFSA came about. Well, South Africa didn't have a great savings culture the government in partnership with the financial services sector put together a fund that would encourage people to actually save over and above of course your types of retirement funds educational funds this specific fund what it does is that it gives you some tax benefits what are those tax benefits we know that tax benefits are always a one way to really encourage economic participation when it comes to your people right so TFSA says that you will not be charged any or have any tax implications on the return that you make on the specific account. And the reason why I don't call it the interest return is because the tax-free savings account where the asset base is actually cash, that's where you're going to derive some level of interest return, right? However, the way... When we're looking at the more evolved TFSA, which is a tax-free shares account, there you may be get getting dividend, um, 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 what's the word? Dividend, di getting dividend returns, but also capital gains on if your asset, your other assets um, are, you know, real estate, property, or whichever other asset base your tax-free shares account may actually be in, uh, 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 invested in, right? So very, very important for you to understand that ultimately there will be no tax implication on this fund. And I think it's, it's only fair because let's look at it this way. If you look at retirement funds, um, retirement funds, you contribute towards them with your uh, 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 before tax amount, right? You've got an allowance of up to 27.5% or up to 350,000 Rand annually, right? So that's money that has not been taxed yet that you are putting into your retirement fund and you only get taxed on that money in retirement. Whereas with a tax-free savings account or a TFSA, you're going to be investing or saving money that has already been taxed. So it's your after-tax amount of money. So it's good that you're actually not going to get taxed on any of its returns. The smartest thing about using the TFSA is being able to to map out your investment or savings journey and try as best to get momentum as quickly as possible in terms of the asset basis that you're going to be investing in so that you can make a huge amount of return from the earlier onset so that after that you can even swap out the type of TFSA that you are actually invested into a cash-based one when you are now looking to preserve that interest that you have gained or the dividends that you have gained. So that's, this would be a best way to do it. The TFSA, unlike other funds, does have a certain level of limitations. The first one is that it is capped. And this is simply to make sure that those of those people who are out there who have lots and lots and lots of money don't exploit the TFSA by not uh, by investing a huge amounts of money into it and never having to pay any type of tax on it, right? So it is capped at 36,000 Rand per financial year. So you can only contribute 36 thousand rand into the tfsa that works around about three thousand rand a month into the tfsa in one specific financial year and you've got a lifetime limit of five hundred thousand rand again i'm going to stress this it is there to make sure that those who have huge funds do not exploit this by running away from paying any tax the argument could be but most individuals already have a an allowance of up to 23,800 when it comes to interest returns. This is why I then say it, it may be worth it for you to look at the tax-free shares account and begin with that one where you may not be paying any tax on your dividend um, um, income or dividend returns and you run away from um, um, that the uh, um, feeling like you're not really gaining anything because you already have 
a threshold or a, a tax incentive of 23,800 if you are an individual below the ages of 65, 65 in South Africa. So very, very important for you. I always say the tax-free savings account or tax, so TFSA rather, does not work in isolation on its own. You would, you would want to pair it with other financial products that exist for you to be able to gain its maximum benefits. So if you are somebody, for instance, that is already invested in some sort of cash um, investments and funds where you are gaining or you are deriving some sort of interest return and it is going above your 23,800, the tax-free savings account comes into play very nicely. Now, the TFSA is also a very long-term type of investment. That's why sometimes people get confused when they call it the tax-free savings account because it, it, it mimics the requirements of an investment, right? So a lot of people get confused to say, is it a savings account? Is it an investment account? I see it as an investment account because it is long term. Um, for you to really be able to see the power of compounding, you need to let your money sit and reinvest itself. So remember that the tax free benefit that you're getting is not only on the actual money that you are investing and the returns that it makes, but even the compounding returns that you're going to get a little bit later on. So that 500,000 rand limit the quicker you can get to it which is probably going to be 13 years and some is you let it sit there so it's money that you should not be needing after like 13 years right so it's important to make sure that if you're going to get the best benefits of your tfsa it is to let your money sit for that long period which i think for me the minimum is the 13 years because that's how long it will take you to actually hit the cap if you stick to the 36,000 rand every single year provided that the minister of finance does not increase either the, the the financial year allowance or the lifetime limit allowance so that's also going to be quite important for you but also you know, you, 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 you need to get into partnership with a financial planner so that they can assist you in finding the right TFSA. You are allowed to transfer your TFSA as long as you are not trying to contribute more than what your allowance is per year. So you can move your TFSA, for instance, from the Stanlib TFSA to an Easy Equities TFSA, for instance. That is allowed, right? How, and you can have two if you want to, which I don't think is, is um, advised because you are splitting the compounding Unless you say maybe you want to, to do a, a bit of diversification, so half of the money you would put it into a tax-free savings account, which is cash-based, and then the other half you would want to put it into a tax-free shares account where you've got a little bit more exposure because you are investing in equity, right? So that, that is one way to look at it. Um, um, but I think it's also, from a control perspective, it sometimes gets difficult because it's, you, know, you may forget that you've already it, uh, 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 contributed more than what you need to contribute on the one one because you forgot that you contributed uh, some amount on the other right so that it's, it's important to make sure that you're always keeping an eye on the balance um, most platforms where you are contributing to your TFSA the moment you go or you have reached the total amount that you're allowed to contribute the system will actually tell you that you don't have any more um, a balance that you still need to contribute to be able to hit the threshold of your TFSA the other thing that you need to remember is that a TFSA is not a short-term time of investment that's why the, the tax-free savings account always confuses a lot of people and people often want to use it as an emergency account it cannot be used as an emergency account for a couple of reasons one is the fact that once you withdraw from the tax-free savings account you cannot replace that amount of money you can only put in up to 36,000 rand so let's say for instance you start off your year and you reach your maximum by maybe let's say August and then you have an emergency and you withdraw. You won't be allowed to replace in that financial year. So it means that for you to reach the 500,000 Rand limit, you now need to extend the period of investing instead um, of, 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 of doing it only in 13 years. So very, very important for you to remember that you cannot replace. But also, you know, emergencies don't come knocking and saying to you, oh, I'm gonna need 36,000 Rand. You may need more than 36,000 Rand as an emergency. And, and, and the TFSA doesn't really Really play a great role in doing that right um, because it is capped at 36,000 rand per annum right the other thing is that you when you're looking for an emergency account you need something that's going to give you access to your money as quickly as possible if you are invested in a TFSA which is a tax-free shares account instead of the savings account you may find that you first need to sell some equity and it's, it's you know it, it takes a little bit longer than 24 hours for you to be able to access that money so again these are some of the things that you've got to think about 
about and keep at the back of your mind. Now, who can open a TFSA? Well, anybody that's got a South African ID is able to open one. So in other words, you actually can open one for your minor children. However, remember, there is a lifetime limit. So if you make a decision to open one in your child's ID or under your child's ID number where you are the donor of that TFSA, it's important for you to remember that you are taking away that decision from them when they are later older and would want to open their own TFSA for their own reasons. So you would have, let's say, for instance, they want to use it for retirement and you are using it in maybe for their education. You are taking away the ability for them to use it as a retirement vehicle. So that's also important for you to keep at the back of your mind that if you are going to be making this decision, perhaps maybe I don't know. You can't get your child to sign to say, yes, I agreed and I consented to this, right? Um, so this is something that you're going to have to keep also at the back of your mind that it is a possibility that your child may want to use it later for other reasons, but you are now have used their ID number and you've opened a TFSA on their behalf. You've funded it from your um, 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 allowance from donations tax. Um, but now all of a sudden, you know, they can't use it for another reason because they may have reached their lifetime limit by the time they actually access it. So that's also something that's important for you to remember. The last thing I want to speak a little bit about is, of course, fees. We always talk about, you know, what really differentiates some uh, funds will be the fee structure. Most TFSAs have really great fee structures. So again, please make sure that, uh, you know, when you go into a TFSA, you do check what the fee structure is. Is what does it look like? Because remember, it's a tax-free fund. So eventually when you withdraw, those fees are going to account for a lot. So for instance, if your last balance before you withdraw is like 2 million, right? And the fee structure says the, 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 the fund manager or the, the guys who are administrating your, or the financial planner gets 1% of it. That's basically 20,000 Rand that they get from you, right? So it's important to make sure that the fee structure is um, a friendly one, for instance, but you also understand because sometimes there's account management fees, there's fund management fees, especially when you now get into a fund where it's a tax shares account where there's a whole lot of maneuvering and and, 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 and and administration that needs to happen on the on the fund there's also a little bit of smart and savvy that the fund manager is going to have to put in to make sure that they give you the returns that you have projected which means that the fund can actually have a fee structure where they're charging you for actively managing that fund so it's important that you also keep that at the back of your mind that the fee structure is going to eat away at your profit so make sure that the fees are actually favorable and it's fees that you actually um, um, don't mind paying. So yeah, I think I'm going to cap it at that because um, the tax-free savings account is an interesting financial product. So if you want to find more information, please go and speak to your financial planner. Ask them about the options that are available. Find the TFSA that is most suitable for your life, your goals. Remember, at the end of the day, it's goal-based investing and goal-based saving. Look at your goals. What are you trying to achieve? How much do you need? Work it out. Will a tax-free savings account be the right financial product for you? If yes, then you go and have a conversation about making sure that you acquire that type of financial products. I'll see you guys on the next one.